What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, yeah, that's right. There's new Digimon cards to talk about. It's, well, I'll be honest with you, it's a day. And at the moment, when we have a day, we get new Digimon cards to talk about. I am in no way, shape, or form even remotely upset about this. I adore the new Digimon trading card game. I love talking about new cards. And today, for the very first time ever, we've actually got some purple option cards to be talking about. So let's have a gander, shall we? Probably shouldn't surprise you to know that our translation here comes from the lovely Jason Snowjacks. So first of all, we've got a card which looks a lot like ones, a few of them in fact, that we've seen before. Darkness Claw. It is a one-cost purple option card that reads, one of your Digimon gains plus 3,000 power for this turn. Now, if it comes out as a security card, it is not even remotely like that. If it comes out as a security card, you gain two memory. Which I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say is um, a little bit weird and probably not exactly what we were expecting. But hey-ho, ladies and gentlemen, that's all right by me. Now, we've seen, as far as I'm concerned, a slightly worse version of this with Emerald Blaze back in New Evolution. Emerald Blaze was a one-cost blue card that gave one of your Digimon an extra 3,000 power, which is exactly the same, incidentally. But as a security skill, you drew one and added the card to your hand. I'd probably rather have the two memory, if I'm honest with you, because the extra memory really, really helps. Similarly, we saw a green version of this in New Evolution, Hornbuster. One of your Digimon gets 3,000 power until the end of turn. And as a security card, you rested one of your opponent's Digimon and then added this to your hand. Though again, I would still, I'd still rather have the extra, if I'm honest with you. I would still rather just have the extra two memory because memory, I mean, it's literally your resource for the game, right? Memory is how you basically do everything for the entire game. So the more memory you've got, the more options you've got. And I really am a fan of having the extra memory. In terms of the card itself, it is exactly the same. But I do really love having the extra memory, which makes me prefer this as an option card to the others. Even though they do largely the same thing. Also worth pointing out, Red did actually get this back in its starter deck. Which, again, one cost card, extra 3,000 power to one of your Digimon. But the security effect said all of your Digimon gain security attack plus one next turn. And I, I do really like that. There is a chance I actually like the red version more than the purple version. And then the starter decks are also where we saw the yellow version that gave you an extra plus 3,000 power for one memory. We've seen that already. And during this turn, i.e. the turn it's flipped as a security card, you get an extra 5,000 power to all of your security Digimon and regular Digimon. And then you add it to your hand, which is a really nice card. But it's extremely situational. If you flip it as a security card where you just don't have any Digimon that are being attacked or coming out of security. Or if it's flipped during your opponent's last attack of the turn or whatever. It ends up doing nothing. So all the typings have had this. The question is, how do we feel about this one? And I feel pretty good. Incidentally, we should have a black version of this in the set as well for fairly obvious reasons. I mean, the plus 3,000 power, there's very little we can say about it, right? You get an extra 3,000 power. It makes your Digimon beefier. It means that you're more likely to get KOs or deletions in the parlance of this game. Whether that is taking out a resting Digimon and going, ah, oh, he's got more power than me. Oh, wait, now I've got more power than him. Ha! And then taking him out. Or whether it is just giving yourself an extra 3,000 power so that if you do come across a security card, you are less likely to be taken down by said security card. Either way, it's a pretty good thing. I just really love the security skill here. Bearing in mind, security skill means on your opponent's turn. So what's going to essentially happen here is your opponent is going to attack. This is going to end up being flipped during the attack and then if your opponent's got one memory or zero memory remaining then the memory gauge will actually flick over to you and your opponent's turn will end even if they've got more attacks to do 
incidentally, if they are in the middle of multiple security attacks, remember they do get to finish out those multiple security attacks before the turn goes to you. But you still get to essentially take a turn earlier than you should normally. That's why I love this so much. The extra 3,000 power, we've seen this. We've seen it multiple times. We've seen it on all the other typings. It's fine. But it really is a security skill here. There are going to be games where you're playing purple. This comes out as a security card. And then it becomes your turn. And there are going to be games where your opponent was one attack away from winning. And it goes to your turn and then you end up winning. We've seen this for other types, for other colours. But I do think the security attack sets it above the others. Now, the other option card we've seen today is Trump Sword, a seven cost option card. So you know it's either going to be really good to justify the fact that we're paying seven memory or not good enough. And then we're going to think it's really bad and be terribly upset. Where do we come down? It is a very powerful card. What it does is you destroy one of your opponent's active Digimon. And if it comes out as a security card, you activate its main effect without paying the cost. I.e., if it comes out as a security card, you destroy an active Digimon. If you play it from your hand, you destroy an active Digimon. And this is a weird kind of card that could be really, really good or really, really bad. You see, on the one hand, taking out active Digimon is awesome. We saw this with Rust Tyrannomon when we looked at that card a couple of days ago. General rule of the Digimon trading card game, you're only allowed to attack and take out resting Digimon. So anytime you get the opportunity to take out an active Digimon, that gives you a huge advantage. Do remember, of course, that when your opponent plays a Digimon, it will be active, but you're not allowed to attack with a Digimon the turn you play it, often referred to as summoning sickness. So they play a Digimon, they're not allowed to attack with it, it comes to your turn, oh, but they're active, you can't attack them, oh, wait, you totally can because you've got this card in that regard it is absolutely over the top brilliantly awesome on the other hand what if all your opponent's digimon are resting what if they've attacked with all of their digimon and all of their digimon are at rest what if this comes out as a security card during your opponent's last attack when all of their digimon are already at rest the answer is nothing Nothing happens. You do nothing. You gain no advantage. Nothing has happened which has gotten you closer to winning the game. If there are no active Digimon, this does nothing. And this is why I'm really in two minds about this card. On the one hand, being able to take out an active Digimon is phenomenal. And I am all in favor of it. On the other hand... Only being able to take out an active Digimon makes me look at this and go, well, it's not always going to work. One of the reasons I was so high on Rust Tyrannomon was you can take out an active Digimon. But it was a regular attack. So you can regularly attack a resting Digimon, which means that Rust Tyrannomon can either take out an active or take out a resting. And I believe I put as the headline for that video something along the lines of nothing is safe. That's why I felt so good about Rust Tyrannomon. When I look at this option card, I don't feel the same. I feel like Trump Sword can be a phenomenal card. But I can also see many times here where it comes out and you go, oh, all their Digimon are resting. This does nothing. Adding 3,000 power is always going to be good unless you can't attack. But if you can't attack, something's gone seriously wrong. Trump Sword is only going to be good if your opponent's got active Digimon. And sometimes they will. Sometimes they will keep a Digimon active because they want to evolve it next turn and don't want to risk it being destroyed or deleted. So go and delete it using this and that will be amazing. But there are going to be times where your opponent just attacks with all of their Digimon. They're all resting and this does nothing. I mean, you could compare this to Gaia Force, the red card from the starter deck. And I just prefer it. As in, I prefer Gaia Force significantly. It is an 8 cost rather than a 7 cost, but it just deletes a Digimon. No ifs, buts, or maybes. 
I don't really want to save one memory and then not be able to take out a resting Digimon. And yes, I know I can just attack to take out resting Digimon. If I've got a Digimon with sufficient power. But if I attack to take out a resting Digimon, I am then, unless I've got piercing, not performing a security attack. So I've got to make a choice. Either I take out a resting Digimon or I take out a security card. My point is, and I think I've shown this quite well at this stage, I hope I have at least, there are plenty of reasons why sometimes only being able to take out an active Digimon isn't good enough. I would rather just have Gaia Force. And for what it's worth, I'd also rather have Cockatus Breath. This was the Big Bad 7 cost from the blue starter deck, and this returns an opponent's Digimon to their hand while discarding all the evolution sources. And yeah, fine, they can still play that Digimon, and some Digimon with play skills will love this. But it still takes them completely off the board without having a waste and attack, and most of the time I'm going to cover that just a little bit better. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying it's a bad card by any stretch of the imagination. I'm saying for a 7 cost, I think it's a bit too situational, and we've seen other cards I like better. So I suppose what we've got here is one card that I like better than the alternatives, and one card that I don't. But I'd like to know where you come down. I'd like to know what you think, so let me know in the comment section. Good nuts! Me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.